After school, I go to the cafe where my job training starts. I don't know what to expect. I have no experience. I am not sure if I can do this job. When I come to the cafe, I am very surprised. It is a modern cafe which sells coffee, tea, and also chocolate cakes and sandwiches. And my boss is only 25 years old. She started to work at the cafe more two years ago. She has a lot of experience, and she knows everything perfectly. She shows me how to prepare coffee, how to wash the dishes, and how to deal with customers. It is all new for me. I remember only about 20% of what she tells me. But then she lets me do the work, and she corrects me when I make a mistake. She is very friendly, and I learn fast. After the first day at work, I am very tired. But I am happy that I have a job. The next day is Friday, and I go to school again. One student asks an interesting question. Sometimes when I speak, I am not sure if I speak correctly. I am not sure if I use correct grammar. Can you help me what to do if I want to learn grammar? Our teacher says, Thank you for your question. There are two groups of students. Some students study English because they want to be able to speak. Some students study English because they want to pass an exam. For each group, the situation is different. First, I will speak about the students who need English for speaking. If this is you, you don't have to study grammar a lot. When you learnt your native language, you also learnt it without studying grammar. You can learn English grammar naturally by using the language. The best way to learn grammar naturally is by reading a lot. Books are written in good grammar. When you read, you will learn grammar in the context of the whole sentence. I also recommend shadowing. When you do shadowing, you practice the correct grammar. You do it naturally. You don't have to try to remember anything. You only copy sentences with correct grammar. If you need English for speaking but also want to study grammar, you can visit Grammar in Levels. This website shows what grammar is important for the different levels of English. You can find the most important grammar rules for speaking there. The second group of students are those who study English for passing an exam. If you are one of these students, I recommend studying specifically for this exam. It can take the versions of this exam from the past years, if it is possible, and train with them. Of course, your exam will be a little different, but the structure is usually the same or very similar. From my point of view, the versions of the exam from the past years are good training materials. Then I recommend going to the exam only when your results in the training materials are such that you can pass the exam successfully. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you, says the student. This is good news. I don't like studying grammar. I learn English because I want to be able to speak. I don't need to pass any exam. I am happy that I don't have to study grammar much. I like reading, and I am happy that I can learn grammar by reading books. After the lesson, I go to the website Grammar in Levels. It is really a nice website. There are grammar rules with examples for each level. They have three levels. These levels are 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 words. In the afternoon, I go to my work. It is my second day, 
and I can already do a lot of things by myself, but my boss helps me when I need it. I see that my work is not very difficult. Also, I can practice English when I speak to our customers. How to test your English It is Monday again, and I go to my school. Our teacher asks us what we did at the weekend. I say that I was at work on Saturday. I say that I can already do my work well. I say that I am happy when I can speak to our customers. When I speak, one of the girls in the class asks me, What happened to your voice? You sound very different from what we heard last week. Your pronunciation is very good. I smile, and I say, Thank you. I used shadowing on Saturday evening after my work and the whole Sunday. I tried to speak like a native speaker. I know that it is not perfect, but I also see a big change in my pronunciation. Our teacher asks if other students tried to practice shadowing. Three students say yes. One of them is the student from South Korea. He also likes this technique. One student says that she tried the technique, but her mouth was in pain after five minutes of shadowing, and she stopped. She also says that she wasn't always able to repeat everything because the recording was very fast for her. Our teacher says, Thank you for trying out this technique. If you do shadowing for the first time and your mouth is in pain after five minutes, you do it correctly. Your need to train your muscles to this new way of speaking. It is like going to the gym for the first time. Your muscles can hurt if they are not trained. If the muscles in our mouth hurt, you can take a break after five minutes of shadowing, and you can continue a bit later. With every five minutes of practice, your pronunciation is better. Shadowing has also other advantages. You practice the correct pronunciation in English, and you also practice other things, for example, intonation, rhythm, and connecting words in whole sentences. I know that, at the beginning, the recording can sometimes be very fast for you. If this happens, you can repeat only the first or the last word in the sentence. With practice, you will be able to repeat more. I say that it is true. On Saturday, when I started with shadowing, it was difficult for me. But on Sunday evening, it was easy to repeat what I heard. Then I have a question for our teacher. I tell her that I looked at grammar in levels. The website is interesting, but I don't know what level is for me because I don't know how many words I know. Our teacher asks other students if they know how many words they know in English. It is interesting to see that nobody knows. We know that we are intermediate students, but we don't know how many words we know. Our teacher says, There is a website for people who study foreign languages. You can do a test there. You can know how many words you know. The test has only two steps, and it is really simple. The name of the website is testlanguages. You can do the test every month, and you can see how much you improved during that month. If you want, you can now take your smartphones and go to that website and do the test. I am really interested in knowing how many words I know. I do the test immediately. I find out that I know 2,100 words in English. Most of the students know between 2,000 and 2,200 words. Only Monica, 
and the boy from South Korea know 2,500 words. Our teacher says, So, you can see that when you go to grammar in levels, you should already know grammar from level 2. You can start using grammar from level 3 because level 3 is for students who know between 2,000 and 3,000 words. How to Handle Mistakes On Tuesday, I go to school again. One student asks our teacher an interesting question. She says, I want to practice speaking with people around me, but I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want to look stupid. Can you help me? Our teacher says, Making mistakes is a very interesting topic. There are a lot of opinions on this topic. I want to show you what I believe is the best to do. I have a lot of experience with this because I also learn new languages. For example, now I am learn Spanish. When I speak Spanish, I don't care if I make mistakes or not. The reason why I don't care about mistakes is simple. When I learnt my native language, I didn't care about making mistakes. Mistakes weren't important for me. My main goal when I use any language is to say my ideas. It is all. I know that when I read a lot, speak and do shadowing, my Spanish will be better and better. I know that this can look very simple, but it is my opinion. This is what I learned after many years of teaching and learning languages. It works very well for me and many of my students. When I speak, I only concentrate on speaking. At the moment, I know 1,500 words in Spanish. It is the level of a two-year-old child. Two-year-old children make a lot of mistakes when they speak, but they don't care about their mistakes. They continue using their native language, and when they are three years old, they make very few mistakes. And when they are four years old, they usually speak very well. You can do the same. Now, most of you know about 2,000 words. So it is absolutely okay to make mistakes, time to time. When you continue using English, there will be fewer and fewer mistakes in your speaking. It is not possible to go to a higher level if you don't make mistakes. When you practice English, it is okay not to be perfect. Perfection comes with practice. All people who started to learn English started from the beginning, from the same level, from level zero. Learning languages is like learning to play a musical instrument. It needs to be trained. When you start your training, it is not perfect at the beginning and you make mistakes. It is normal. Take it as a necessary part of your learning process. If you don't go through this period of making mistakes, you can't get to higher levels. When you continue to use English, the mistakes can step by step go away. If you want to make fewer and fewer mistakes, do a lot of reading and shadowing. When you read, you can read aloud. It can also help you make fewer mistakes. In real conversations, Care only about exchanging ideas. Don't care about making mistakes. When you speak, you practice changing your ideas to words. You don't learn grammar or words. You have other activities for it. Don't worry. Everybody who learns a foreign language makes mistakes sometimes. Famous people, bosses of big companies, or Politicians make mistakes, too. When you listen to these people on TV, you see that they don't care about mistakes. They care about what is important, and it is saying their ideas. You can do the same. Does it make sense? The girl says, Yes, thank you. 
How to remember words. On Wednesday, I go to school again. At the beginning of the lesson, one student says, I started to read more. I feel that it is good for me. I can see how my grammar is better, but I have a problem. When I read and I don't know a word, I look at the word in a dictionary. Then I continue reading. Sometimes when I see the same word again ten minutes later, I don't remember the word, and I have to look at it again. Can you help me to remember the words better? Our teacher says that it is an interesting question, and she gives this explanation. It is normal that you don't remember the new word immediately. Usually, you will have to look at the word five times before you remember it. There will be also words which you will have to see ten or fifteen times. These words are usually verbs. When we learn a new word, the word goes through phases. Only when you achieve the last phase, you remember the word very well. There are five of these phases. We can look at them now. The first phase is the moment when you see the word for the first time, and you don't know the word. You look at the word in the dictionary. The second phase is the moment when you see the word for the second time. You know that you saw this word before, but you still don't remember its meaning. You look at the word in the dictionary again. The third phase is the moment when you see the word again and you feel what it could mean, but you are not sure. For example, you know that the word is some kind of object or some animal or a verb. The fourth phase is the moment when you already know what the word means when you see it, but you are not able to remember the word when you want to say it. When this phase happens, the word is in your passive vocabulary. The fifth phase is the moment when you are able to use the word when you speak. Now you can see there are five phases all together. Do you understand now why it is not possible to remember a new word when you see it for the first time? It is usually not possible to jump across all the phases with the first meeting with the word. You have to see or hear every word many times and let the word go through all the phases. You can be happy not only when you learn a new word perfectly, but also when you get from one phase to the other. When it happens, you are closer to the final goal, and it is to use the word without problems in everyday communication. It is interesting to me. I didn't know about these phases, but it is all logical. I also have this experience when I look at a new word in the dictionary, but two minutes later, I don't know what the word means, and I have to look at the word again. I feel stupid when I don't remember the word. Now, I know that it is okay not to remember the word forever when I see it for the first time. I need more meetings with the word before I can use the word well. After school, I go to my football training. Our coach tells us that there is a match on Saturday. The school team will play against another school team from Cambridge. Our coach tells me to come and play for the school team. I am very happy, and I am looking forward to the Saturday match. When you want to remember a new word, you need to see or hear the word about ten times. How to Improve Listening The next day, I go to school again. One of the students has an important question. He wants to know how to improve his listening skills. He wants to know what the best method is. 
Our teacher says, Thank you for your question. Good listening skills are very important for communication. If you don't understand what people are saying, it will be difficult for you to speak with them. There are a lot of materials on the Internet for students of English. Some students can have a problem to choose the right listening materials for them. Now I want to tell you what materials you can use for listening. There are two types of materials which you can use for listening. You can listen to some audio or you can watch a film. These are two different types of materials. When you listen to some audio, it is good to know 95% of the words or more. If the audio has a lot of new words, read the text first if possible and look at all new words in the dictionary. When you practice listening, you practice getting information from a spoken language. You don't try to learn new words. Of course, sometimes you can learn new words, but it is not the main goal. When you listen, concentrate on getting information from spoken English. It is important to use materials at your level of English. For example, you can use books in simplified English which have an audio recording. I really recommend these books to you. They are fantastic because you can choose a book at your level of English. When you have such a book, read the book first and then listen to the recording at home or when you travel. You can read two great books at Robinson Crusoe in Levels or The Little Prince in Levels. You can also visit News in Levels if you like listening to the news. All these materials are in three levels of English. The second type of materials for listening practice are films and videos on YouTube. These are also very good. You can start to use them when you know 2,000 words in English or more. This is what you should do with a film. Watch it for the first time with subtitles so that you know the story of the film. Then watch the film without subtitles. If you like the film very much, you can watch it more than once. When you watch one film many times, with every view, you can understand more. It is also good to watch videos on the Internet about interesting subjects. For example, if you like nature, you can watch documentaries about nature. You can also watch reality shows. Reality shows are much easier to understand than films or documentaries because the structure of the show is usually the same. It is necessary to have at least 30 minutes of listening every day. When you listen to English materials, always look at what you already understand. It can be only 10% at the beginning. It is better than 0%. Continue to listen, and soon it can be 20 or 30%. Always look at what you already know. Be happy for every new sentence which you understand. Does this information help you? Yes, says the student. Thank you. The listening topic is very interesting for me. Now, I know what to do to when I want to be better at listening. When you want to be good at listening, listen. For 30 minutes every day. What you need before you start. On Friday, we have an interesting conversation in our class. Our teacher has a question for us. She asks, Do you remember your first impulse to learn English? Do you remember the moment when you started to learn English? I say that I remember the moment when I started to be interested in English. My teacher says, Can you tell us about this moment? I say, Yes. 
First, I have to say that English wasn't always my favorite subject. I started to learn English at high school. At the beginning, it was very difficult for me. I didn't understand the structure of the language. It was illogical to me. I tried to remember words. I tried to learn grammar, but it was very hard to me. When I finished high school, I was still only a beginner. I couldn't speak English, and I believed that I couldn't learn this language. I believed that English wasn't for me. Then something happened. I always liked music, and when I was 20, I started to listen to the Beatles. I wanted to understand their songs, so I started to translate the texts of their songs. Slowly, I understood more and more. Then I met two ladies from England on a train. We had a simple conversation, but it helped me very much. I started to believe that I could learn English. From that moment, I was working on my English almost every day, and I was better and better. Then I started to go to this school. My teacher thanks me for telling my story. She also tells me, here is something very interesting about your story. First, you didn't have motivation to learn English. Then you had a motivation. You wanted to understand songs. You can see that motivation is very important. When you have it, you can learn English. When you don't have it, it is very hard to be successful. Then our teacher asks everybody in the class about their motivation to learn English. The stories are very interesting. One girl's motivation is to be able to read historical books in original English. One student wants to be a professional tennis coach in England. He wants to speak perfect English before he starts his career as a coach. One woman wants to work for a big international company, and she needs English for her job. I can see that everybody has some motivation to use English in real life or to get information from books. At the end of the lesson, our teacher asks us if we like English. I say, I didn't like English at my high school, but now I like it a lot. I can see how useful it is to know this language. Our teacher says, this is another important factor when you learn a new language. It is good when you like something which is connected to English. It can be people, music, culture, or history. If you like English, it is easier for you to learn it. If you want to communicate in English, it is good to know 3,000 words or more. If you don't like English, it is more difficult to find time to practice. Then it is difficult to get to the level of 3,000 words. I can agree with my teacher. Now, I like the Beatles, but also my teacher and my boss, who is also English. I also like English humor. Now, it is much easier for me to find time to practice English every day. On Saturday, I go to play football for my school team. We have some very good players on our team, and we win 3-2. to two. We are all very happy. We go to the pub after the match, and we celebrate our victory. When you want to learn English, you need to have motivation to use English every day. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next lesson.